Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, on the fire escape outside Helen Pritchard's room, a large, burly man was forcing an entrance. Just a little more. It, ah, that's it. Helen, yeah. from the bed, gave a startled scream. Ah! Well, who, who are you? What do you want? You! The man's large hand went over Helen's mouth, stifling her cries for help. With the other hand, the man brought up a gun to level at her head. Now! The door opened swiftly. Mrs. Peel came in. She took in the scene at a glance, flung herself across the room, crashing the man against the wall. The man yelled and slowly slid down the wall into a heap, shot with his own gun. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 3 of this story, in which Emma Peel protects her charge, and John Steed unearths a few empty facts in... A Grave Charge. Mother, with an unerring instinct for scenting out trouble, had guessed that the amnesia case suffered by Helen Pritchard was the key to a much more complicated mystery. He was right. Helen swore that Jonathan Jupp, a rather shady financier, who was reported to have died on the eve of his arrest for embezzlement, was still alive. Steed's investigations had taken him to the Happy Meadows burial ground. With an exhumation order, he'd prevailed on the manager, Mr. Happy Chap, to prove that Jupp was indeed reposing in the special area known as Paradise Plot. Returning to Mother at his headquarters in Huntington Hospital, Steed was rather gloomy. Well, we were wrong, Mother. Jupp's buried all right. And quite, quite dead. So the whole affair's over. And that's that. I'm afraid not. But it must be. Helen Pritchard must have been suffering from hallucinations when she reported that the man was alive on that train. There's nothing more to it. There's a devil of a lot more to it. What do you mean? What's happened? Cordell? There's been a murder attempt on Helen Pritchard while you've been away, Mr. Steed. What? Unfortunately true. Fortunately, Mrs. Peel was splendidly on form and able to foil the attack. And again, unfortunately, the man was killed in the struggle by his own gun. Oh. Well, that does seem to complicate things. But all right, it, it still doesn't mean that her story about Jupp was correct. There's a little bit more to it than that, Mr. Steed. You see, we've identified the attacker. His name was Brad Morton. Brad Morton? Another quite familiar name. Morton was a financier, a very clever one. Too clever for his own and other people's good. When last heard of, he was on the brink of being prosecuted for fraud. Just as Jupp was. But you said this one's death wasn't engineered. You said yourself it was an accident. Brad Morton officially died six months ago of a heart attack. <sighs> also, just like Jupp's. Oh, wait a minute. Don't tell me where he's buried. Yes, you've got it, Steed. Officially, he rests at... Uh, happy Meadows. Yes, you have my permission. I'll arrange it immediately. Mr. Happy Chap's face fell considerably the moment he saw Steed's car park outside. When Steed came into his office, cheerfully waving a piece of paper, Happy Chap gave a horrified groan. No. No, I don't believe it. Not another one. I'm afraid so, Happy Chap. Uh, here's the order. You wish to exhume another one? Oh, really, Mr. Steed, this, this morbid curiosity is verging on an obsession. If it's the actual digging that interests you, may I suggest that you take up gardening? I mean, roses, for instance. I mean, plant now and by the summer. You should have a fine show of all kinds. Mr. Happy Chap, this is business. These things have to be done. Oh, 
Oh, very well, then. But if this ever gets out in the train... Oh, it won't. It'll be our secret. Well, I mean, is it? It's all so insecure. I mean, people like to think of permanence in these matters. I mean, up and down all the time. People will think I'm running a motel. Mr. Happy Chap. Oh, very well. Which one is it this time? Outside the Humpington Hospital, a car drew up. No one got out, at least not immediately. The two men inside sat and talked. That's it. That's the wing, Charlie. Up there, that window near the fire escape. The name is Helen Pritchard, Ward 10. Right. Yeah. It's a gun, Charlie. Right. And don't... Right. Go on, then. How'd you get? Right. Upstairs in Private Ward 10, Captain Cordell was fixing a heavy shutter over Helen's window. There you are. Need a battering ram to get in here now. Oh, thank you, Captain. I feel very much better for your protection. That's good. Now, Helen, dear, do you think you could go over it all again, just once again? But I've told you everything I can. Well, you've told us all you remember. But perhaps if you told us again and thought it out more, you might remember more. Oh, all right. Here goes. When the man Charlie climbed the fire escape, he could only hear the voices. That's really all I can recall. I've been thinking about nothing else. Being over and over it. Oh, well, there's no need to worry about Peter. Me? Oh, oh, you mean the little dog? It's all right, is it? Yes, quite safe and well cared for. Charlie was extremely frustrated. He could just see through the shutters, but there was no way he could aim a shot into the room. Infuriated, he made his way back to the car. It's no go. No go? What do you mean? Oh, she's barricaded in up there. Not a chance of getting at her. I tell you, she's heavily guarded. If you want to knock off that bird, you'll have to do a lot of clever thinking. A straightforward job is definitely out. While at Happy Meadows... Well, Mr. Steed, I hope you'll have a suitably guilty conscience. Well, this is the one, all right. Brad named Morton. All right, let's see. Right. To me, Bob. Uh, to you, Tom. Oh, careful now, careful. Oh. Oh, my word. We. Yes, the coffin was empty. He's been stolen, taken away. There's a thief in our midst. Right, come on. Where to? I want to use your phone. All right, you two, as you were. Ah, I well, reckon we'll never be as we were ever again. What do you say, Bob? Mother was sipping a gin and Italian, smoking a French cigarette, nibbling a piece of Danish cheese and reading a German newspaper when the telephone rang. Mother threw down the paper. To the devil with the common market. Mother. Mother, Steve here. But we are on to something. He isn't there. Who is not where? Bradley Morton. There's a coffin, all right, but no body. Body snatchers in this day and age. Looks like, but for what reason is beyond me. Although, um, I have been reading the headstone. Reading teacups or even other people's greasy palms, I can understand. And perhaps forgive. Tombstones, never. Uh, Well, listen to this lot. John Ash... George and Tony Barter, Pat Vernon. No, Steve, will you stop sounding like the manager of a third league football team and endeavor to make yourself more coherent? Think about those names, Mother. Eh, uh, Barter, Vernon. Ah, yes, of course, all financiers. All involved in seedy deals and all of them buried here in Paradise Plot. I see. Well, if you're sure, then I suppose there's only one thing for it. Steed, from his end of the line, cast a sly glance at Happy Chap, who was sitting in a chair with a dazed expression on his face. He looked up at Steed with a spaniel-like plea in his eyes. Mr. Steed. Mr. Steed, you... You wouldn't be considering... Well, that's the position, Mother. I don't know if you think we should. I most certainly do. See what you can dig up. You mean all of them? What other alternative have you? Yes, all of them. Agreed? Yes. Well, yes, I agree. There's... There's no other way. Yes, attend to it. Yes, mother. Yes, I'll attend to it. Bye. What's the happy chap? A bagpipe, old man. A bag of old chap. I don't want this to come as too much of a shock, but, uh, yes. All of them? That's right. John Ash, 
George Barter, Tony Barter, Patrick Vernon. Later, much later. John Ash, George Barter, Tony Barter, Patrick Vernon, all of them up, all of them open, and all of them empty. I'm afraid so, happy chap. <laughs> but it's so awful. I mean, it's simply awful. Oh, it's too awful. There's nobody left. The great grave robber in. But, but what do we do? Do? Well, back to square one, if you ask me. Jonathan Jopp. Oh, no. No, no, no. Not again. Ah, I wish they'd make up their minds. I do that. We'll be charging overtime, Mr. Happy Feller. I warned you that. And later still. Right. To me, Bob. No. <laughs> to you, Tom. <sighs> Et tu, Jopp. Also shuffled off this immortal coil. It is impossible. In the midst of death, we are in life. So it seems. A short time ago, Jupp was dead and buried, and now... Well, if he is alive, where the devil is he? But no one knew it. But only a short way away. Everything to your satisfaction, Mr. Jopp? No, everything. <laughs> Never enjoyed myself more. <laughs> Nothing you want. Oh, no, thanks. Wine, women, and song. <laughs> There's only one thing that would really give me added satisfaction. I'd love to see the look on my wife's face <laughs> if she knew where I was now. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. Coldwater Omo.